Good morning. Praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. I want to let you know that this Saturday, October 1st, is our next Victorious Faith Seminar in the Denver Tech Center. And we'll be meeting again at the La Quinta in N Suites on the northeast corner of I-25 and Arapahoe Road. That's this Saturday, October 1st at 6.30, 6.30 p.m. at the La Quinta in and Suites on the northeast corner of I-25 and Arapahoe Road. And I want to encourage you that if you need a healing in your body, we always are there to pray for the sick. And so I just invite you, you come out this Saturday to the Denver Tech Center uh, meeting And we will pray for you, lay hands on you, and we believe God for his healing anointing to flow in your body because we believe it is God's will for you to be totally healed, completely, perfectly healed in Jesus name. So if you need prayer for healing, I invite you to come and join us. We always are there to pray for the sick. And so No matter what kind of service we are having, we are always there praying for the sick. So we want you to come. If you need prayer, come this Saturday, October 1st at 630 p.m. to the La Quinta Inn and Suites in the Denver Tech Center on the northeast corner of I-25 and Arapahoe Road. Now, we started last week the series on healing. We are now studying healing. And last week I taught the lesson about how the Lord cares for the body. The Lord cares for the body equal to the spirit, where some people think wrongly that God cares more about your spirit than your body. I showed you scriptures that God cares about your body equal to your spirit. He is equally cared, caring about your body as much as your spirit. The Lord is for the body. First Corinthians six, 13, first Corinthians six, 13 and third John two beloved. I wish above all things you prosper and be in health, be in health even as equal to your soul prospers as your soul prospers, you should be in health equal to God cares for your body. Now I want us to look at another question and I am specifically addressing these questions because they have been taught wrongly through tradition in Christian churches, actually for hundreds of years, none of this is new, but it's old and it is based on ignorance of the scripture. Ignorance of the Bible produces wrong thinking and then wrong teaching. And so let me bring up another question that has been wrongly answered. Does God have a purpose in your life for sickness? Does God have a purpose in your life for sickness? Well, usually tradition has taught that God uses sickness to teach. God uses sickness to teach. Well, if you just look at it in that simple statement, again, to me, that just sounds so stupid. So stupid. But the question is, God use sickness because a lot of Christians have not been able to believe it was God's will for them to be healed because They think that God gives them the sickness 
Well, if you think God gives it to you, then you will not have faith to resist it. They think God gives it to them for a purpose, and the purpose is usually to teach, to teach them. Sometimes they might say to bring something else about in their life. But let's look at this one. Does God use sickness to teach you? Well, for any idea or concept that is thought and especially that is taught, it must have scripture foundation for it to be scriptural. There must be scripture and sad to say people who have said that God gives you a sickness to teach you a lesson or to teach you something They have no scripture for it. No scripture. I will show you scripture that shows otherwise. I will show you scripture that shows otherwise. Does God use sickness to teach us? First of all, let's look at what does the Bible say? That God gives to teach us. What does God give us to teach us, his children? Especially think about we are his children. First of all, let me just bring it to a natural relationship. Do you have children? If you wanted to teach your children something, Would you put sickness on them? Would you put cancer on them to teach them? I don't think you would. You know, that would be called abuse in today's society, child abuse. Would you, for example, if you want to teach them that fire is hot, would you put their hand in the fire? Would you put their hand in the fire? If you wanted to teach them that the stove burner, when it's turned on, is hot. If you wanted to teach them that the burner is hot, would you put their hand on the burner and burn their hand? Absolutely not. That would be called child abuse. Well, if God were to put sickness on you, that would be child abuse. If God puts sickness on you, that is the same thing as child abuse. And in today's society, in this world, if God was physical, he could be arrested. Child abuse is a crime. Child abuse is a crime. We are God's children. God does not commit child abuse by putting sickness on his children. That is evil. So, God does not put child on you, uh, sickness on you. That would be child abuse. That is evil. And in, do you remember Matthew chapter seven, verse 11? If you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give good gifts to, to his own children? To those who ask him. So if you are evil and you give good gifts to your children and you don't put sickness on them, you don't put their hand in the fire or on the burner. According to Matthew seven eleven, how much more will your heavenly father give good gifts to you, his child? Amen. So then what does God use to teach us? Well, look at John chapter 14, verse 26, John 14, 26, but the counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the father will send in my name, will teach you 
all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. So who does the Father send? The Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you, teach you, teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. So this scripture, the Bible says, God gives us the Holy Spirit to teach us. And by the way, there is not one scripture as directly as this says directly. The God, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things. God sends you the Holy Spirit to teach you all things. There is not one scripture in the entire Bible from Genesis 1 to Revelation 22 that says just equally as directly, just as directly, God sends you sickness to teach you. Never a scripture that says that directly. People have tried to twist scriptures and squeeze out an implied meaning, which was not implied at all. To say that God gave this sickness to teach. They twist and squeeze scriptures trying to squeeze out what they consider an implied meaning. That God gave a sickness to teach, which was not implied at all. Not implied, but you cannot even take an implied meaning. And base doctrine. On implied because implied is totally up to interpretation. And when you have correct interpretation, it's not even implied. You cannot base doctrine on implied meanings or your interpretation of an implied meaning. You have to have direct scripture. Then there is zero direct scripture. That says directly, God gives this sickness to teach you a lesson. Zero direct scriptures that will say that. But there is direct scripture. The Holy Spirit whom the Father sends in my name will send, will teach you. Direct scripture directly says the Holy Spirit is sent by God to teach you. So who does God give to teach you? The Holy Spirit. Let me show you another direct Scripture. Second Timothy three sixteen and seventeen. Second Timothy three sixteen and seventeen. All scripture. All what? Scripture. Bible. Scripture. Is inspired by God is inspired by God or God breathed and is useful, profitable for, for what? What's the first one? Teaching, instruction. That's the first thing listed for teaching or instruction and for Rebuking and correcting. Well, some people say, well, God gave this sickness to correct me. There's not a scripture that says God gives sickness to correct. It again says for teaching the scripture is useful, profitable for teaching and rebuking and correcting and training. Teaching or instruction and rebuking and correcting and training in righteousness so that the man of God or this is a child of God may be thoroughly equipped, thoroughly equipped for every good work. God gives all scripture, all Bible scripture for teaching, rebuking, 
correcting training. So we see two things God has given you as a child of God to teach you. Number one, the Holy Spirit is sent by God to teach you. Number two, all scripture is inspired by God to teach you, rebuke, correct, and train you. These are direct scriptures. Are, are these scriptures are spoken directly, saying the Holy Spirit and the scriptures are given to teach you. There is no scripture, zero, not one in the entire Bible, that as directly as that will say, God gives sickness to teach you and to train you and to correct you. Never. It's not in the Bible. So it is an unscriptural doctrine. It is an unscriptural doctrine. Sad to say that hundreds and probably thousands of preachers have ignorantly said because they did not know. They did not know where sickness came from. They thought, well, God sends it to you to teach you. They're ignorant. The script, the Bible does not say that. And if there is no scripture for it, it is an unscriptural doctrine. And you cannot make up your own interpretation of a scripture and say that there is an implied meaning that says God will use sickness to teach you because in every one of those instances, that meaning is not even implied. It is a wrong interpretation of those scriptures to even think there was an implied meaning. It's not even there. And you cannot base doctrine on implied meanings. You must find direct scripture statements. And there is not one that says God gives you sickness to teach you a lesson or to teach you, train you, correct you. It's not in the Bible. It is unscriptural. What is scriptural is God gives you the Holy Spirit to teach you and train you. And he gives you the Bible, the written word, the scripture to teach you, train you, correct you, rebuke you. Amen and hallelujah. And as I said before, if God were to put sickness on you, that would be child abuse. And in today's world, that could be cause that is a crime that can ca can be uh, cause arrest. You could be arrested. God does not commit crimes of child abuse, putting sickness on his children. So then we need to ask the question, where does sickness come from? It does not come from God. So where does it come from? Well, sickness comes if we go backwards, step by step. First, it comes from the curse of sin and death. The curse of sin and death comes from sin. Sin comes from the temptation of Satan. Satan is the agent. Satan is the tempter. And he is the agent of the curse. The Holy Spirit is the agent of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. The Holy Spirit brings life. Satan is the agent of death. The Holy Spirit brings life. Satan is the agent of death. Now, let me give you more scripture. I'll show you scripture after scripture. You will have to deny the Bible to say that God gives sickness. The Bible says it comes from Satan or first you could say it comes from the curse. Romans 5, 12. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man and death 
through sin. And in this way, death came to all men because all sinned. Death through sin, death came to all men. Death is the parent of sickness and disease. Sickness and disease are the offspring of death. Sickness and disease is death working slowly on a low power in the body, cell by cell by cell. That's why it could affect one part of the body, but not all the body until it spreads and covers the whole body. But sickness and disease is death working working in low power, cell by cell. And as you turn up that power of death, it is killing and destroying the body faster. So that's why some diseases kill faster than other diseases. For example, even some cancer is very slow, but some cancer is very fast and very quickly. I mean, even in days can just knock somebody out and kill them. So it depends on the strength of that spirit of death working in the cells. And in low power, it can work slowly over a long period of time. But if the body doesn't ever get healed of that sickness, it will eventually bring that person to an earlier death than if they had not been sick. It will speed up the death process in them than if they were not sick. And so sickness is death working in low power in the body, cell by cell and Romans five, 12. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin. And in this way, death came to all men because all sinned. So it's not necessarily, I don't want to you to even think that I'm implying that because you committed a sin, you have a sickness. No, we've all sinned. Everybody has sinned. And if you've repented, you've been forgiven. But we're talking about not just one particular sin or one specific sin, but we're talking about the sin that came through Adam and Eve to all men and therefore all sinned. And that sin committed by Adam and Eve introduced the curse into the earth, the curse of sin and death and the curse of sin and death then came on all men. And that's what it says in Romans five twelve: death came to all men. So if there is a sickness in your body, it is not from God. It is not caused by God. It is not, Sent by God, that would be child abuse. It is caused by the curse of sin and death. God did not send the curse. Sin brought the curse. Even if you go back to Genesis 3, where Adam and Eve sinned, and God said, cursed is the ground, he did not say, because of me. He said, because of you, because of you speaking to Adam, 
and Eve. Genesis 3.17, Genesis 3.17, cursed is the ground because of you. You see, God did not even send the curse. God sent and gave the blessing in Genesis 1.28. God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply, increase and fill the earth. God sent the blessing. But when Adam and Eve sinned, the sin reversed the blessing into the curse. And the curse came out of Adam and Eve who were carrying the blessing. And God said in Genesis 3, 17, cursed is the ground Because of you, because of sin, not because of me. God did not even send the curse in Genesis 3. God simply followed up the sin after they sinned, teaching them and explaining to them where the curse came from, why the curse is there, because of you, God said to Adam, because of you. So the curse of sickness and disease is because of sin and death in the earth, not because of God. Well, join me again tomorrow. Remember, God loves you. You're blessed and highly favored by the Lord.